<laughs> Life is okay. It's turn and done, we're alive today. <laughs> so, welcome back to Meditations for You. Today is lesson number 10. Today we are going to have a very, very exciting session. That much I can say because it's going to be extremely mystical. <laughs> so I'm waiting for a few more people together, especially at the Zoom. And um, a very warm welcome to all of you, those who are joining me on Zoom session, as well as Facebook Live. And we have also people who gather here, a bigger group today. We have at least six, seven people here uh, at the Ardenum. So, I'm waiting for everybody to settle down. Let's take a few moments to settle into the space of meditation. Okay, So, sit in any comfortable meditative posture, whether it's Sukhasana, Easy Pose, or Padmasana, Lotus Pose. Even other Padmasana is also possible, it means Half Lotus. So, where you are able to sit for a long time. So, then align the whole spine in one straight line, head, neck and spine, so that you basically are seated on the sitting bone and the whole spine is upright. And you actually feel weightless when everything is aligned properly. You don't feel strained. You feel comfortable, you feel weightless. That is the alignment, proper alignment of the whole structure. So find the alignment in your meditative posture, whether it's Sukhasana or Padmasana, or even Siddhasana is also a good uh, one for meditation. Then close your eyes. Begin to bring awareness from head to the toes. The whole physical body, where the boundaries of the skin ends, be inside the body with awareness and start expanding your awareness to encompass your breath. So let's inhale very slowly and deeply. Enter into a gap a pause at the end of the inhalation and exhale slowly and completely. At the end of the exhalation, you enter the second gap, the second pause, neutral zone. Continue breathing in this way as you gradually start aligning this body-mind to the space of now. Come to the restful awareness and let's join the palms together as we invoke Swamiji, our Guru. Join the palms in the Amanjali Mudra in your heart center. Chant the Sadguru Vandanam together. If you already know how to chant this mantra, take a deep breath. Nityanandam Paramasukaram Kevalam jnana mutim Vandvati tam gagana shatrisham Tattvam asya dilaksham Ekam nityam vimalam achalam Savvadi sakshi bhutam Bhavati tam trigunarahitam Sakurun tam namami Let's chant the Mahavakya three times. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham 
சிவோகம் in that silence meditative state let's pray to swami ji pray to arunachala the paramashiva in the form of fire to grant us the experience of smarara mutti avachala when we meditate on this statement later pray sincerely to both of them for giving us the experience of this dhyana remembrance getting receiving the liberation just remembrance that is the meditation that we are going to experience today so pray to them sincerely When you're done, you can slowly, very slowly open your eyes. Welcome back to yet another fascinating session. Today is the 10th session. Let me just see who are the people on joining online and with, on Zoom with me. Okay, so we have these people. Great. So today I can say that this is going to be a, the most mystical meditation that I'm going to facilitate because Arunachala chala is a mystery okay those of you who have experienced gone to the to the hill you understand the mystery but today we are going to not only experience the mystery we're literally going to be there so we're going to do certain power manifestation so that you you're literally using your astro body your subtle body sukshma sharira you're going to be teleported there and experience what arena chala is going to be okay so i think before we do the meditation you really have to fasten your seat belt okay that much i can say <laughs> okay so today is the meditation the topic is smara mukti arena chala this is what swami ji has given us as uh, instruction on the 28th of may in his uh, message to meditate on this so that's why that was the inspiration from him and i wanted to you know take everybody there since it would be nice doing as a group as well so that's why the the lesson 10 is going to be the meditation as instructed by swami ji so a warm welcome to all of you my name is mani tirugananda today is 1st of june 2022 and welcome to kalasa singapore next slide So what is the flow of today's session let's have a quick look okay what are you going to be doing is today i'm going to help many of you who are first time knowing what is arunachala chala see as swami ji's devotee disciple followers you cannot don't know arunachala chala it is not justifiable okay so you have to know Arunachala because Swami ji's birthplace is there and the significance to him and to one's spiritual liberation so in today's session i took the effort to make you understand the significance of arunachala okay so you cannot tell me you don't know what is arunachala why swami ji makes such a statement okay after today's session you should know you should be able to tell even your children okay now the next thing is what is the the history behind this this uh, mountain okay the mystical happening on planet earth where parmashiva descend as the hill okay so all that are not methodology they are history how parmashiva manifests himself in this form and all the story behind and why this is such a important energy field 
you all should know and then you will go and visit okay <laughs> my last visit was uh, december 2019 with a group of uh, devotees we went because we decided to take a tempo trip so it was really really nice and that was also the trip i really had time to spend in Arunachala. so many mystical experiences it's like suddenly i don't know maybe because you know uh, at that time when we were there it's like everything just kind of come together we felt so welcome and so many mystical experiences around during the few days four days we were there hmm? so i'm going to share some of the experience we had <laughs> then after that we're going to understand what swamiji's instruction was in the message why he said meditate on this truth okay so we're going to go through his words and internalize it and then we're going to meditate on Amunachala. okay then finally we will conclude by having a few of you share your experiences and then we hopefully can finish everything on time okay so give me a thumbs up yeah you're, you're good to go everybody is okay yes now let's understand the significance of Amunachala. next slide So here it says Smaran Mukti means Smaran means remembrance. Just by remembrance you can attain liberation. Mukti means liberation. Okay. So why is it so? Why is that such a statement? So let's understand the context. First, see each spiritual center, energy field in India had its own character and its line of tradition that means there is a history there's certain uh, association with it among them all all these different energy fields one very significant one is Swamiji's birthplace Amalachala which is in the temple town called Tiru Vendamalai okay it is in southern part of India it's a very very spiritual center where the whole town is nothing but temple okay so everything revolves around the temple and Swamiji has chosen that place to assume his body. And you will know why, okay, when you go through this, the story behind it. And that represents the most direct, the most, I would say, formless and the most least ritualistic path, the path of self-inquiry, whose gateway is silent in his, uh, initiation. So just by silent initiation, you can attain mukti, liberation. So this is expressed as in the old very Tamil saying because the whole area is very much uh, the main language is Tamil. Okay, so he said to see to see you go to Chitambaram. This is the the temple Chitambaram. Okay, where Nataraja is the presiding deity. To be born, <laughs> see to be born, take birth in Tiruvara. Tiruvara is a place where you are born there, you are liberated. Okay. Okay, so if you want to be liberated, just find your place and assume your body there. And then he said that to die, die at Bararas. Okay, Bararas is Kashi, Varanasi. If you want to have liberation and you want to, you know, die at liberation, die in Kashi, which is uh, Varanasi. Okay, then it says even to think of Arunachala is to be assured of liberation. So, for of all the different places, Arunacha is, you just have to remember to think only, you get liberation. You don't even have to travel all the way to Kashi. You don't have to go to Chidambaram. Arunachala is just by remembrance, you get liberated. See, remember in the Living Enlightenment book, Swamiji did say once that the last thought you entertain before you leave the body determines your next next path right if you think of something let's say you have, you have attachment to something and you come back you know in that form right so if your last thought is Chala, for sure you'll be liberated isn't it so constant remembrance so this today's experience don't think that it's just going to be a meditation whatever you're going to go through is going to imprint into your consciousness so when you leave the body that thing this power will open up 
okay and you will remember when I mean, you remember you lead you to liberation also okay so understand he says that even to think of it because it is the case of the direct path physical contact is not necessary so cool right don't need to be there you can get liberation hence it has no uh, it was no accident that Bhagavan Sri Rama uh, Ramana Maharishi Sima, uh, is an enlightened being and make this place you know Tiru Malay as and its sacred Alonachala mountain as his home of all the places in India he chose this place as the place where his home and where he retires okay so be please be very clear this place it's so sacred and so uh, high in energy field so let's look at a bit more next slide so Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi called Aranachala the spiritual heart of the world can you imagine of all the world it is a spiritual heart <laughs> he said that the word Aruna means red, bright, like fire. Because that that hill, Aranachala hill, is the fire element of Paramashiva. Okay? And does not signify mere fire. It's not only just the fire that gives out heat. Okay? Rather, it means jnana apni. It means the fire of wisdom. When you're there, you have the you will get the fire of wisdom and get enlightened. Okay? which is neither hot nor cold. The fire wisdom is not hot or cold. It's just liberation. So uh, achala means heal, right? So arunachala means the <clears throat> basically the fire, the, the fire of wisdom in the form of a heal, okay? So arunachala means heal of wisdom. Next slide. The thought of you, I just feel like I want to go back there. <laughs> Okay, this is what Paramashiva promised to his disciple. So listen to this. When he manifests that heal, this is direct words from him. Okay, he says, Though in fact fiery, my lackluster appearance as a heal on this spot is an act of grace for the maintenance of the world. I also abide here as the Siddha, Within me, there are many glorious caves filled with all kinds of enjoyments. Know this. Remember, Swamiji did say in his satsang in the Arunachala Hill, there are many, many caves. There are many, many underground structure. Is exactly that. Whether we can go in or that's a never story because you need to you need to get access to be able to enter into the glorious cave because you need to be in the same frequency as Arunachala Chala so that he will open the door for you. But inside this hill, don't think that it's just a it's a it's a solid hill. Inside has got many, many caves where many enlightened beings reside. Okay? So so far, I've not been to the caves yet. I've only been to the rock. <laughs> so action naturally binds the entire world. He said action, when go into action, right? It binds us to the, the world. Once refuge, right, from such bondage is this glorious Arunachala. By seeing which one becomes itself, what cannot be acquired without great pains, the true import of Vedanta, which is self-realization, can be attained by anyone who looks at this hill from where it is visible or even mentally thinks about, think of it from afar. It means even by thinking of the hill itself, you can attain liberation. Okay, Seeing or thinking, he says, I, the Lord, ordain that those who reside within a radius of three yojanas. This is the, the Sanskrit way of measuring the distance. One yojana is 7.6 miles. Three yojanas is just times three, okay? So times three or 7.6 miles is that radius mm -hmm. where if you are in that radius, okay, three yojanas of this place, Aranachala, shall attain union with the Supreme which removes bondage even in the absence of initiation. 
without initiation, just be in the energy field within three yojanas. You can attain oneness with Paramashiva and attain liberation. Okay? So, such is the significance of this Avalanachala hill. Isn't it so exciting? <laughs> Do you feel that it's so exciting? We're going to meditate on the hill. Next slide. <laughs> okay. So let's look at this. In, in case those of you who are new, who are joining for the first time, you don't know what about the Puranas about Lord Vishnu and uh, Lord uh, Brahma, how they had a fight and what happened, how Paramashiva came. So I'm just going to narrate this story very quickly because many of us have heard it, but I want to take a quick uh, moment to share. Okay, so this is about the Avalicharashwara Purana. So once Vishnu and Brahma uh, the Lord of Maintenance and the Lord of Creation. Both of them had a fight. They had an argument. Okay, So they're arguing about who is the greatest between them. So Brahma is arguing that I'm greater than you. And then of course Vishnu said, you after creation, I have to maintain. I'm greater than you. So then they had a, this squabble. Okay, So, and you can know that when creation and maintenance are having a fight, what happened? It leads to disturbance. <laughs> Right in on planet Earth <laughs> and also the whole universe. So it the, the the dispute became too much that the all the devatas, you know, all the um the god and you know felt that they need to calm them down. Okay, they need to stop this uh, uh, squabble. So they went to approach Paramashiva as usual <laughs> and asked him to settle this dispute. I said, this two is fighting, can you please settle it? Okay. So Paramashiva thereupon manifested himself as a column of light, light shaft, okay? Called Jyoti Stamba, the light shaft, which a voice issued declaring, you know, this, I'm still in the, uh, Shankari, I think you turned this, I haven't finished reading it. Yeah, which, a voice declaring that whoever could find the upper and the lower end of him shall be declared the greater one. That means they have to find the head or the tail of Paramashiva. If you can find the head or the legs of Paramashiva, whoever found first will be the greater of among the two. So that was the the uh, the challenge that Paramashiva gave to both of them. Okay, so Vishnu took the form of a ball, a pig, right? A wild ball, and start digging into the earth, okay? <laughs> to find its base. Whereas Brahma took the form of a swan, okay? Like a Paramhamsa, and start soaring into the sky, right? Upwards to reach the summit. He's trying to find his head. So one is trying to find his base, one is trying to find his head. So they all went different direction, opposite direction. So, then Vishnu, after trying for so long, he felt that he failed to reach the space of Paramashiva. So, the base of the column, the light shop, okay? So, and he beginning to see within himself the supreme light which dwells in the hearts of all. He, he became lost in the meditation. He, he basically had a spiritual experiences because he felt that he's not going to uh, succeed in finding the base and he surrendered, okay? He finally surrendered. So oblivious to the physical body and even unaware of himself, the one who uh, slaughtered. So Brahma saw a flower, on the other hand, who was falling from the years of Paramashiva. And basically he had a conversation with the with the flower and thinking that by you know by declaring that he win by by lying he's going to win this game, right? So he he actually told the uh, the flower, conspire with the flower to say that, okay, tell tell the, you know, tell everybody that you, you, you know, I found you, you know, I found the head of Paramashiva, that's why you're, you're the weakness, okay? The flower is the weakness of his, uh, you know, attainment. So, because you came from the year of uh, Paramashiva, so, you know, by having you as a witness, I can declare as a winner. So that was the lie that he tried to uh, tell everybody. So so Vishnu admitted his failure and turned into Paramashiva 
in praise of Paramashiva and prayer. You are the self-knowledge. You are the Om. You are the beginning and the middle and the end of everything. You are everything and illuminate everything. So he he had that realization who Paramashiva is, okay? And he surrendered, okay? He was pronounced great while Brahma was exposed and confessed to his <laughs> lie and fault, right? So in this legend, in this Purana, this history, Vishnu represent the intellect. When the intellect surrendered, he, he reached Paramashiva. Brahma, on the other hand, represent ego. The ego which is cunning, the ego that is, you know, playing tricks and try to lie to Paramashiva. Whereas Paramashiva is the Atman, the spirit who knows everything. And obviously he knows <laughs> that fella, the Brahma is lying. So right away he was cursed in the sense that he's, that's why you can see that Brahma is never worshipped in any temple. There's no temple dedicated to him. You have Vishnu temple, but you've never seen a Brahma temple. Okay? So the story continues that because the lingam, the column of light, he came as a light shell, like a, like, a, like a column of linga, okay? Jyoti Stamba, okay? And was too dazzling to behold, Paramashiva manifested himself instead as the Arana Chala here because it was too bright. So he then formed into the Arana Chala here, declaring, as the moon de uh, derives its light from the sun, so other holy places shall derive their sanctity from Arana Chala, okay? So this is the uh, only place where I have taken this form for the benefit of those who wish to worship me and obtain and obtain il uh, illumination. Arana Chala is Om itself. I will appear on the summit of this hill every year at Katikaya Deepa, right? Katikaya Deepa, you know, we go and light the lamp, yeah? in the form of a peace-giving beacon, okay? One can understand this meaning of Bhagawan uh, saying, in the end, everyone must come to Arunala Chala. So basically, this uh, Bhagawan Ramana Maharishi said that eventually everyone has to come to Arunala Chala because that's how you will experience that liberation. Okay, so that is the Puranas on this uh, this whole hill. Let's go on to the next slide. So let's look at what Swamiji's message was all about. Because we because he, he he's we're living in many layers and layers of truth. Okay, and you need to catch the truth. So when we sit with Arunachala, all the incompletion, all the delusion, all the you know, wrong cognition will just melt away and you will just experience the truth, okay? So he says, your mind's fear to look into the source of your thoughts, which is the real you, your soul, is the real problem of all living beings, okay? So the fear that you have to look into the source of your thought is what is stopping you from realizing your soul. This starts the whole problem, okay? So that's what he says. Whatever you may think about you, imagine about you, convince about you, cognize about you, look into that fearlessly, all your problems will just disappear. All the problems you're facing, relationship, career, health, all kinds of problems you're facing, just look inside without fear, okay? Look inside that whatever is the situation, the problem. So all your problem will disappear, okay? So no escapism, no inauthenticity. Just be ferocious with yourself and look in. That's what he said. That's the second very important message. He said, neither your being, Atma, nor the being of Paramashiva has any limited form, which means as consciousness, you are formless, okay? You don't have a limited form. This body, mind is a limited form. It's matter, okay? So, but your being, Atma, even though does not have any limited form, decide to associate your, with your body. It is reflecting as its form, as its own, okay? Because you have decided to associate yourself with form. Because it was a decision you take, unconsciously. So that's why, even though the, your being knows that you are formless, but you decided to associate with the body as this form. 
Same way, Paramashiva decides to associate himself with the Aruna Chalahi. He decides Paramashiva as a manifest. He manifests as the form in Aruna Chalahi. To liberate all the beings who associate themselves with the body or any form. So, because for us, to go to the jump to the formless, it does not happen easily. We 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 still need to connect with form, then you can jump from form to the formless, just like how we connect with the deities, right? Deities is form because we are in a form now, we have assumed the form. So when you connect with the deities and experience the formless, right? From form to formless, that is possible. So same way he said, I appear as Arula Chalahu in this form. And if you're interested to connect with me in this form and reach the formless, this is why I, I have appeared this way, okay? To make you realize neither your being Atma, okay, just he says, so continuous remembrance of the Aruna Chala Hill will make you realize neither your being has a form, the Paramashiva has a form, because by that remembrance, you will experience a formless, okay? This is what is meant by Smarana Mukti, Arunachala. By remembering Arunachala, you attain liberation. Just by remembrance, Arunachala liberates you. Okay? So, he said, meditate on these sacred secrets. First about fear, then face your fear, look inside, um, and all your problems will go away. And then understand that, you know, you actually have decided to associate with this form. So now, he's making you experience the formless of you, hmm? then attain the liberation. Okay? So, he said, meditate on this uh, sacred secrets I reveal, and you will manifest the state and powers of Param Paramashiva, because all of us are his devotees and disciples. We are all his extension, and are in oneness with him. All of us who are initiated by him, we are in you know, oneness within our, we are his extension. So, that is the message. So, today we're going to do this meditation. Okay, so next slide. So, I don't think we can do 42 minutes, so we'll do one energy cycle, unfortunately. Okay, <laughs> if you want to do 42 minutes, you have to do it maybe on your own. Once today you, you go through the process, you know how to do it, then you're more than ready to um, sit for longer period. Okay, so now um, Shankari, you can stop sharing the slide. Let's, I would prepare you first, then you will be, we're going to have a live, you know, in Avanchala, there's a live webcam that is constantly projecting the, the um, Avanchala hill. Thanks to our friend, <laughs> she basically shared the link from Europe, and uh, so she, we're going to have that as the backdrop. After I settle you all of you, and then we're going to connect with the hill, and go to the meditation. Okay, are you all ready? Yes, give me a thumbs up. Okay, so just a few words before we enter into the meditation itself. When I was there, together with Kai and a few devotees from Singapore in December 2019, yes, we had so many spiritual experiences. One of the spiritual experiences that Kai had was, <laughs> Kai, Kai is a very, very funny guy. He will, he will ask questions again and again. So he, he, was, he was there sitting in front in a uh, adinam of, uh, you know, Swamiji's adinam. And he was just asking the hill, uh, have you seen alien, please? Where's the, <laughs> have you seen alien, please? I think that was a question. So he keep asking, as in, and, and, and uh, Paramashiva never replied. He was just there in silence. After some time, guess what Kai saw? He saw, <laughs> suddenly on the hill, he saw <laughs> some UFOs. <laughs> then he was shocked. <laughs> That's the answer from Paramashiva to him. <laughs> he said, I'm, I'm too lazy to, sh to tell you, I'll just show you. So he, he saw literally the UFO around the hill. Okay? So what I'm, I want to say is that when you are in communion with that hill, be very clear. 
It is a it's an independent intelligence. So today I'm going to make you sit, and then I'm going to bring all of you to the hill. Okay, I've done it before in one of the Katikai Deepam. I think in 2018. Yes. So today I'm going to do it again. Let's see. So sit now with the back straight. You don't have to wear the eye band because you need to look at the Arunla Chala hill. Okay. So sit now. Maybe for a few moments, just prepare. You can close your eyes. Get into the meditative space. Connect with the breath first. Your breathing. Because the prana shakti is the breath of Paramashiva. Remember what Swamiji said about the, the wrong cognition we have and what is holding us back in realizing the formless of us. Because we're associated with the body, we have associated ourselves with form. Okay? So when you connect and remember Arunachala, he takes you to the formless. So let's now... Bring awareness to your body and your breath. You can slowly open your eyes and see Arunachala here. See Arunachala here. This is life, okay? This is life in <laughs> Tiru Benama life, okay? It is life. It is not like a picture. It's life. It's a live webcam. So look at the hill. And literally feel yourself being teleported to that place. In front of you. And just sit with this form of Paramashiva. Just sit. Let whatever happens, happens by the grace of Paramashiva. <laughs> Feel that you are already now at the foothill of Arunachala. Look up and see the grandeur of Arunachala Hill. Feel its energy, intense vibrational energy. Now, let, let him create the adventure for each one of us. 
as we explore this dimension of Paramashiva.
meditate on Arunachala. Where the boundaries between you and Arucha dissolve into one. Meditate on that.
All right, settle back into this body. Feel the body awareness and the breath awareness. Whenever you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. So how was the experience? Hmm? Let's see. Anyone want to share first? Otherwise, you can tap on the chat. Hmm? Shankar, you can take a screenshot of the people who attended today. Let's just try to see who, who attended. Okay. So anyone want to share? <laughs> the mystical are still trying to set the back. <laughs> I feel the energy is very nice, so nice. I don't know. I just like feel so at home in the in the energy field. You know, you should know that when Swamiji, when he was born, when he was young, he said that every time when he open his eye, when he wake up, he should just walk and open the eyes and see Arunachala. So every morning he wakes up only he will see Arunachala. <laughs> Arunachala is the first thing he would see whenever he wakes up. So he will wake up, close his eyes, and walk to the place where he, when the minute, the minute he opened his eyes, in front of him is Arunachala. So, and uh, and he was very, very, I would say, attached to this Arunachala hill. And many, uh, the parents couldn't believe that when he decided to leave, uh, you know, for Pararajaka, it means going, leaving home to wander as a sadhu. So they were surprised that he was able to let go of this attachment. So when it's time, he will do it. So any other people? Let me just see. Someone commented. I saw a big, big tree. <laughs> yes, the big tree is banyan tree. I was in a cave. I found a cave. <laughs> Many, many sadhu inside. <laughs> I was like, wow, party time. <laughs> so, uh, so that was one of my experience. But I felt uh, very, very powerful energy, very nice, soothing energy, just being in the, in the energy field. You know, even though we're not physically there, we're just traveling astrally to there, you know? just looking at the hill. Because I've been there before, so it's very easy to connect back to the memory as well. Hmm? What about you, anyone? Maybe I share? Yes, yes, Can yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> I share a wonderful experience as well with Ar uh, Arulachala. I, I share with Matuka this afternoon. Hmm. So it is not about the uh, meditation, but many years ago, before I met Swamiji, I already know about Swamiji at that moment, but I haven't decided to attend any program with him. But I had a very hard time at that moment. And I, uh, I actually, I, I, I could not live properly at that moment. And I just feel it's very suffering at that moment. And I remember one, one day I, I just paid deeply inside. I don't want to my life be be the, be like that in this way. So I pay hard, hardly deep inside. I want to carry off this uh, suffering. And then I remember that night I dreamed I was wandering in a net, uh, nature. I, I don't know where where it was, but I, I it seems um, very familiar to me in the dream. And then lastly, I saw a hill. But I don't know what's the hill, but I remember it very much. And then after that, after the dream, I woke up and then, eh, 
sorry, at the end of dream, I, I saw the hill and then I just feel that, oh, I'm home now. And then I woke up and then I just feel that all the frustration, all the depression, everything just carry off my system. And then I can restart my life again on that day after the dream. I, I feel, wow, so amazing. What's, what's the dream and what's the hill? I don't know what the hill was at that moment. And after I met Swamiji, Aloha Ba, Arochala, and I saw the photo, I noticed that this is the, the hill I dream, uh, I have in the dream. But at that moment, I don't know about, you know, the birth things or so. I knew nothing about Swami. I knew nothing about Arochala, uh, Arochala Hill. So I, I, I think it's very amazing. And this, the energy from the hill really healed me, healed me at that moment. And during the meditation, I watched the this. I, I haven't been there actually. <laughs> I hope I'll be there some someday. <laughs> I don't know. He, 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 he's <laughs> calling your name. Come, come, come. <laughs> yeah, but I really yeah. In the meditation, when I uh stared uh on uh, on the screen, the the life kept uh, the life of uh our um our mm. I just feel he's it is calling me and uh in the meditation I really found a cave also. I saw uh a shivalinga inside the, the cave. Mm. Yeah, it's very amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Jane said that she, she felt uh, everything stopped there, no wind, no time, just the place, yeah. It's a space, yes. Any anyone else have a very interesting experience? Hmm? So see, the more and more you remember about Aurela Chala, it will lead you to the formless, and you simply get liberated. Okay. So see, Paramashiva is so compassionate. He gives many different doors for liberation. And this is the, the quickest door. Just remember only you can get liberated. You don't need to physically travel to Kashi and wait for your death. Or you don't need to wait till you take the birth in this Tiruvara, uh, Tiruvara right? So it's like so many doors he opens. And this is just the easiest. Um, just remembrance. And I can tell you, when you step into this, um, this Arunachala, you will understand this is so mystical. We're, we're asked to go uh, uh, circumambulance of the, of the hill. You're supposed to go by walk, by foot. And, uh, and that uh, it's, itself is like a spiritual practice for people who visit there. Hmm? And uh, so when you do by walk, they say that you're actually giving the garland to Arunachala. Garland by doing the past. <laughs> I think twice I've been there, I never get a chance to do that because it's. I think the last trip when we were there in Mahasarashi, it was so late, I was so sleepy, so I didn't do the walk. Some people, so the rest of the devotees did. So, any other work? people who shared? Yes, uh, why would I say that? Can we have the link to the live Arunachala here? Yes, yes, I use it, I posted it. Uh, I'll post it again if you missed it. Yes. And uh, it was in the meditation group. It's in the, in the link. Yeah. And uh, anyone else who want to share their experiences? Otherwise, we'll conclude soon. Do try again to, to practice and try to uh, connect more if today you didn't manage to go deep. So it is called www.arunachara.org. Uh, live.com okay this is the one actually was posted by uh, Ma Achuya uh, Maya okay Achuya Maya was the one from Europe she was so sweet I think she said that she she always look at Aaron Chala at the live right camp so she posted it actually I had intention to sh uh, do that and she just read my mind and she posted it yesterday I was like yay I don't have to search for it <laughs> so thank you Ma for uh, you know sending it earlier to us hmm? So, let me just see. 
if you don't want to share, please share in the group. Many of you still trying to settle into the experience. Or I can say that going to visit Aranachala is something you have to do once in a lifetime. So make it this time because if this is going to be your last birth, your liberation, please go and visit Aranachala and you understand. And if you can take Kai with you. <laughs> You know, I tell you, when I was there with Kai, so many mystical experiences. <laughs> he was like, he would be telling me this, tell me like that. It's like so mystical, you know. It's like, because see, he's always in oneness in, in with Swamiji in the parallel universe. So he's able to experience many different subtle things that then when he told me, I was like, oh, really? Wow. <laughs> so it's really, really fun. To have uh, you know someone like I who is connected to Swamji at a deeper level, and you know when you make a trip there, uh, so did you see the UFO? I didn't see because he was the one. I was inside the the, the Adinam, but he was outside. He was walking around, and uh, that's why he told me. <laughs> he shared that with me. I was like, wow, because you asked so many times. I think Paramashiva got fed. I'm okay. I'll show you. <laughs> All right, so. With that, shall we conclude? Hmm? Thank you all for joining. Let's see what we have for next week. So let's all chant the, with the Puna Mantra. Om Puna Madha Puna Midam Puna Puna Mudashate Puna Sya Puna Madha Ya Puna Meva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hi Hari Om Tassat Sauvam Bhagavad Shri Nityananda Paramashiva Paruta Paramasu Om Nityanandam Nityanandam, see you all next week. Thank you for joining. Yes.